This is actually a video response to a question I posted out to the YouTube garage about me asking Richie questions. Um, it seems unanimous that you guys want me to uh, get some of his stories on tape. I mean, he's told me a lot of stories over the years about Volkswagen and uh, the way he was trained and stuff like that. I mean, he was taken in as a mentor. I'm not sure how old he was, 17, 18 years old, 17 years old. But he was taken in by a mentor that was certified. He was a certified German Volkswagen technician. And the way Rich explained it to me was back then, that was the mid-60s, that he went to school in Germany for five years, and his final exam was him walking into a room and having to fully assemble a Volkswagen. Every piece was apart, and had to drive it out of the room to pass his final exam. So, he learned off real craftsmen not like some of the people I see coming into the field today that just want to see how much money they can make as fast as they can make it and not learn anything they'd rather just go on the computer get the answer bolt the part on and move on you know in the olden days it was a craft people learned it there was uh, mentors and apprentices and you worked your way up you got your ass kicked you got your ass kicked again and again and again and again and again even though the 40 years you still get your ass kicked but you learn from it and you said to yourself, you know what, if I learn the product, I can do better. I can make more money. That's the way it used to be. Um, like I said, he has a lot of stories he's told me over the years. He's a little camera shy. Um, I'm going to send this video to him, but I'm just letting you know that um, he's going to appreciate, and I appreciate the fact that you guys are showing interest and want to hear what he has to say. Um... So, with that, instead of responding to every person that's asked me, I'm just going to do a response to this video saying, yes, I'm going to sit down with Rich. It'll probably take a while. I'll get a story here, there, and everywhere, and then probably make one nice video or a couple multiple videos out of it and see if any of you Volkswagen guys, you know, uh, can pick up any tips or hints or from it, you know what I mean? I'm not going to say learn from it because you guys seem very experienced as it is, so... I, to me, everybody's equal. There is no masters and there is no people below you. Everybody's on an equal plane. Everybody's good at something. It's the people that are good at nothing and think they're good at everything. <laughs> that they, That's where problems lie. But um, uh, with that, I mean, he was, in, he was also in two active years of uh, Vietnam, two active years of duty. Um, active service, I guess that's the correct word. And the little bit he's told me, I've learned a lot more about the war than I'll ever see on any of the history channels. Because just like everything else we see on these history channels and what I learned in school, it's all a crock of shit. I mean, I grew up in school five, six, seven years old, and they told me we were the best, we were the best, we were the best, we were the best. But meanwhile, the stuff that was coming out of the media was it was all lies anyway. So I think that's why we got our asses handed to us in Vietnam. Because everybody was convinced we were the best. But that was backwoods, fighting through tunnels, dressing up as a tree, blowing people up type fighting. And we weren't prepared for it. And like I said, you know, listening to a guy that was actually in Nam and hearing some of the stories and then seeing what happened on TV, you know it's highly edited. And it's people like him that need to get the stories out so people really know what happened to these guys. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, it wasn't their fault. They were just doing a service for our country. You know, they shouldn't have been spit on when they came back. They did nothing to us. They just did what the government asked, just like our troops are doing now and our troops will continue to do. You know, I have, I have family members in the military. I thank them whenever I see them because without them we would be nothing so like I said with that I'm not gonna go off on that um, I am gonna ask Rich to see you know I'll sit down with him see if we can get some stories out of him I'll show you guys will find him amusing um, we got a brake handle for the mini bike not to get too sidetracked this is off a BMX bike from I don't know how many billions of years ago but I gotta change the cable 
uh, so we can go with that brake setup. And I think I'm going to try and modify a bike kickstand. I figure they never work right on a bike. Maybe they'll work right on a mini bike. Maybe that's what they were designed for. So, and something like this looks nice and simple with a flat plate. The only drawback is it's aluminum, so I can't weld to it to put a pad on the bottom of it. But, um, I'm thinking flat plate on the bottom. I won't use this upper piece. And I'll figure out where I can put it on the base here. See if I can find a flat spot on the bottom. Whatever I gotta do to make it flat. And tuck it up under there. I obviously can't do it with the car chair, but tuck it up under there and shorten it to need it. And give it a shot. Like I said, the next time we use this thing it will have brakes and the seat will be on. And I would like to have a kickstand done on it. So but like I said, thanks again about the response to Rich. I'm sure that'll make him happy knowing that knowing that he's in a field that None of your bosses give a crap about you, but there are people out there in the world that give a crap about you. So, take care.